Okay, so let's start with uh, the bottleneck bath problem, a uh, motivating example. So you have, say, from the source to the um, terminal destination, you want to send uh, data. So you want to send on the uh, path that has the largest bottleneck bandwidth. So what does it mean? So if you take this as a path from S, A, D, G to T, each of these links, uh, assume these are the bandwidths. So this is like 5 megabits per second link, this is 3 megabits per second, this is 4 megabits per second, and so on. So um, on this path, if I want to send something from S, A, D, G, T, the bottleneck bandwidth of this path is the bandwidth of the link with the minimum bandwidth right so this is uh, of bandwidth 5 megabits per second 3 4 6 so the minimum of these bandwidths is the uh, bottleneck bandwidth of this path so that is um, 3 now on this path from S B E H T the minimum of this bandwidth is 5 so the bottleneck bandwidth of this path is 5 which means you cannot send more than 5 megabits per second on this path. Similarly on this path S C F I T the bottleneck bandwidth is 4. Okay. So obviously if you have a choice between these three paths, you would prefer to use a path that has the largest bottleneck bandwidth, which is 5 megabits per second, which is this path, SBEHT. So given a graph, a network graph with all these links capturing the bandwidth of these links, how would you determine the path with the largest bottleneck bandwidth? So for that, we are going to use a slightly modified version of the Dijkstra's algorithm uh, where uh, we will try to optimize the bottleneck bandwidth path, the largest bottleneck bandwidth path to a particular vertex in each iteration and uh, explore its neighbors. So that's what we're going to see. So this is the relaxation principle of Dijkstra's algorithm. So let me come up with some numbers here. So <coughs> Right, so uh, what this means uh, is we can send from S to U, okay, um, the bottleneck bandwidth of this path from S to U. So this dotted line indicates a path and this um, a solid line indicates an edge, okay. So the path from S to U has the largest bottleneck bandwidth of 40. And this edge from U to V has a bandwidth of 60 megabits per second. This is 40 megabits per second. So right now I know of a path from S to V of bottleneck bandwidth 30 megabits per second. So the goal is now we are exploring the neighbors of U. So what we are trying to see is by going through U, can you um, increase? Can we increase the weight of the bottleneck bandwidth path to V? So which means if we go through U, right, the bottleneck bandwidth path to V uh, would become the minimum of 40 and 60, right? Because from S to U, you can send 40 megabits per second. From U to V, you can send 60 megabits per second. So if I go through U to reach V from S, the minimum of 40 and 60. So we are comparing what? The minimum of 40 and 60 and we compare that with 30 and it is greater than 30 the bottleneck bandwidth of the path that we currently know from S to V so instead of going from S to V on some path of bottleneck bandwidth 30 we can increase this to 40 right so we make now this V uh, uh, this H from U to V okay so U will become the predecessor of V so we can actually forget about this path and we can uh, make the bottleneck bandwidth uh, to be 40 all right to reach v okay so that is the principle so let's go through this uh, graph that we um, saw before so here we have um, s you want to find the largest bottleneck bandwidth path to every other vertex u w v x and y so 
Uh, to start with, initially, the largest bottleneck bandwidth from the source to itself is infinity because the source can reach itself uh, with, with infinite bandwidth, right? So, infinity. And it doesn't know the bottleneck bandwidth pass to the other vertices, so that's why we have negative infinity for all the other, right? Okay, so we start with the vertex with the largest bottleneck bandwidth, which is the source S. Yes. So, we now try to relax its neighbors so we are find, trying to see the minimum of infinity n3 the minimum of infinity n3 is 3 which is still greater than negative infinity so we can make this as the predecessor and make this weight as 3 similarly the minimum of 5 and infinity is 5 and 5 is greater than negative infinity so we can make this 5 and this as a predecessor the minimum of 4 and infinity is 4 and 4 is greater than negative infinity so we can make this 4 okay so now we are left with these five vertices we have to pick in each iteration we'll pick the uh, left among the left over vertices the vertex with the largest bottleneck bandwidth weight so among this five is the largest one so which means when we pick five we have optimized the vertex v right the corresponding vector v so there is no better path of bottleneck bandwidth or larger bottleneck bandwidth more than 5 from s to v okay so we, now we explore the neighbors of v which are y w u right so let's pick up w if we go through v the bottleneck bandwidth will be the minimum of 5 and 1 the minimum of 5 and 1 is 1 and that is not more than 3 that we know currently so we leave it to be what it is now similarly the minimum of 2 and 5 is 2 it's not going to be greater than 4 so we leave it as it is now now the minimum of 5 and uh, this should have been a 4 right so let's, sorry let's make it a 4 this should have been a 4 so the minimum of 5 and 4 is going to be 4 so let's make this as a 4 and this is the predecessor okay now we have what um, 3 4 4 and negative infinity so when you have a tie you can break by choosing the vertex with the lowest alphabet so we pick u right so this has to be 4 okay make the change all right so when you pick u both its neighbors are already optimized so we need, don't need to worry about it so now let's pick up y this neighbor uh, the minimum of 3 and 4 is 3 this is already 3 so we don't need to change the minimum of 4 and 8 is 4 so we can make it Four and make this as a predecessor edge so now we have a kind of um, uh, we have to pick between 3 and 4 so we pick 4 now this is the only neighbor we can uh, uh, we are ready to see if we can optimize it so here it is a minimum of 4 and 5 the minimum of 4 and 5 is 4 so 4 is greater than 3 so we can make this as a 4 and we can um, remove the highlight on this edge because this is no longer the best path this is going to be the predecessor x is going to be the predecessor for w okay and once uh, we reach this stage w is all by itself so that is also optimized okay so all these uh, dark edges put together will constitute what is called the largest bottleneck path tree right let me see if i post to the solutions for the Yes, I can go through that too. No, not yet. Okay. I'll post uh, the solutions.